All right, finally, let's graph ourselves some polynomial functions. You've seen a couple of graphs of these before, and so probably you will uh, recognize why I chose um, a roller coaster for this slide for illustrating polynomial graphs. And uh, that's because that's what they sometimes look like. And generally, you have these nice smooth curves. Now, on a roller coaster, you want smooth curves, right? You don't want points and stuff. You don't want, like, harsh angles because that would be pretty painful. Plus it might fall off the track or something. So when I say you're going to be able to sketch the graphs of polynomial functions, the key word there is sketch. We're not looking for complete accuracy here because we don't really know where those mins and max points are going to be without some calculus. So we're just going to kind of approximate those. We're looking for in behavior, we're looking for the uh, x-intercepts and the y-intercepts, and then how does that graph thread through those points? Okay, so on each one of these problems, we're going to sketch it out ourselves, and then uh, we'll look at the actual picture and, and compare those two. Okay, so um, let's let's first talk about the turning points, the little humps for our graph. So for a polynomial function of degree n, how many turning points should it have? So let's look at the second degree case. So second degree, this, this is pretty easy because we've done this so much we know that there's only one turning point and that's the vertex. So you have one turning point. And the n value was 2. Okay. So in a cubic, our degree is 3. I've got 1, oops, I've got 1, 2, or 1, 2, one, two, I can have two turning points, okay? And the degree was three. Let's look at the quartic case. So in the quartic case, I can have one, two, three. Let's try this one. One, two, three. One, two, three. Maybe you get in the picture here. One, uh, uh. Uh, uh, there's not another one right here. This doesn't turn from increasing to decreasing. It continues to increase. This one right here, uh, in calculus, that's called a point of inflection. And what we've just been doing is calling it, it jags a little bit. Okay, so it's not really a turning point. So this one only has one. This one only has one, and this one has one also. So I could have three, or I can see that I have one, so I can have up to three turning points. And my degree was four. What's the relationship between those things? So that's what the question is, is um, when I look back at each one of these cases, degree is two, I only have one turning point. Degree is three, I have two turning points. My degree is four, I have up to three turning points. In each one of these cases, it's one less than the degree, right? So that's what this is. Summarizing, let f be a polynomial function of degree n, then your function f has at most n minus 1 turning points. Okay? If f has, if your function has exactly n real roots, in other words, every single one of its zeros is an x-intercept, then you will have exactly n minus 1 turning points. So let's go back to just one of these examples. So if I look here on uh, the first one, I have an x-intercept, 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 x-intercept. I have four of them. And if I had four of them when the degree is four, then four minus one, I must have exactly three turning points. Okay, and I can have less than that if, you know, um, I have something like um, some imaginary roots thrown in there. Okay, so until we learn calculus for where those turning points are, those are the relative extrema, mins and max points, we're just going to have to just kind of eyeball those or get them by plugging in points. Okay, all right. So here's my own theorem, which I have titled the interesting bits theorem. Okay, so let f be a polynomial function of degree n then its graph is going to only do really interesting things near and between its zeros. So I'm saying that the interesting parts are only happening around its zeros, and the reason why is because the other parts, just the end behavior, 
they might be both be pointing up or down if it's a referee or disco dancer in opposite directions, right? So all the turny bits are going to happen in between and around the zeros. And that's, well, that's, that's my theorem there. Um, I guess actually, technically, it's a conjecture because nobody's gone around to prove it and whatever. Okay, so review of what your graph could look like around those zeros. First of all, only the real ones are going to be x-intercepts. And then if you have an odd multiplicity of your x-intercept or of your zero, then your graph is going to cross through there. It may cross straight through if the multiplicity is one, or it might jag a little bit if it's more than one. Even multiplicity means that it's going to be tangent to the x-axis at that point, right? So to the second power or whatever. All right, so here is a graphing algorithm. Here are the steps that you take in order to successfully sketch one of these graphs, and it's not too much trouble. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is determine the in behavior. Is that thing a referee, or is it a disco dancer, okay? Number two, find your intercepts. Find your x-intercepts and find your y-intercept. There should only be one of those, right? Yes. Okay, number three, determine the uh, behavior around those things. Is it going to be tangent around the x-intercepts, or is it going to cross through the x-intercepts? Okay, number four, sometimes you might want to plot an additional point. You'll see that we, we probably won't have to do that, because what we're looking at is just a little sketch in order to connect those points. Thread it through there nice and smooth. So. Um, Connect the points with a reasonable curve, keeping in mind what the end behavior is. That's the last step. So let's take a look, do one of these things by hand, maybe two of them by hand, and then I'll, I'll turn you loose to try some on your own. So the first one, graph this polynomial function the old-fashioned way, by hand. We're just sketching the graph. Okay, so I, I needed to look at the very first step was in behavior. In behavior is determined by two things. Leading coefficient, and this is positive, so it's positive, and my degree. I have an x to the first times x to the first times x to the first. My degree is 3. So it's going to be odd, which is a disco dancer, and it's positive. So let me just get a, a little sketch, a little thumbnail sketch. It should be roughly like that whenever I draw my graph. Okay, My x-intercepts are plainly given to me in factored form. In these exercises right now, I want you to focus on being able to graph it, not necessarily finding those x-intercepts right now. I might in the future give you some where it's in standard form and you'll have to factor that thing down and find the x-intercepts, but right now I'm going to give it to you so you can just practice the graphing. So x is equal to negative 2 from the first one, positive 1 from the second one, and then positive 3 from the last one. So those are my three x-intercepts. I also need a y-intercept. On the y-intercept, it's what I would get if I were to stick 0 in for all the x's. So that should be equal to 0.25 or 1 fourth. And uh, first set of parentheses is going to be 2. I plug in 0. And then uh, times a negative 1 times a negative 3. So all of this is negative 3 times negative 1 is 3 times 2 is 6. One fourth of that is 1.5. Okay, so let's put all of this thing together. Oh, wait, what about how does the graph look around those zeros? Each one of these has a, an, eve, or an odd multiplicity. It's raised to the first power, an understood one, which means every single one of these is going to cross straight through, cross through. Okay, so now let's just draw ourselves a generic xy coordinate plane, like so. And uh, let's see, I've got one at negative 2, so 1, 2, negative 2. I've got one at 1, and I've got one at 3, so 2, 3. And my y-intercept is at 1.5. All right, now, whoa, that was at 2. Are you kidding me? Come on, count. Count properly x-axis disappeared. <laughs> Drew it nicely the first time. Okay, one, two, it's right there. Let me change colors here to thread this through. Let's thread it through with some red. 
So look at the in behavior. What's it supposed to do? It's supposed to start downwards and it's going to go up for some time. We don't know how high. It's going to cross through here, cross through that x-intercept, and then come back through. And that's that's the kind of thing that I'm looking for from you. So now let's compare what we have here to the actual picture of the graph that I did on Sketchpad. Ready? So there's the uh, x-intercepts that we found before, negative 2, 1, and 3, and 1.5 for the y-intercept, and here's the graph. And uh, that's pretty close to what we drew, or what I drew by myself. I went down a little bit further, and there's no way to know until you plug in some points. And the other thing is, you cannot expect it to be like the minimum point on this one, the, the uh, local minimum, to be exactly in between here. Exactly in between here would be at 2, but I can see that it's just to the right of 2. And that's because each one of those humps, each one of those turning points is not necessarily symmetric, like it was for the quadratic equations. Let's try another one of these together. So. I've got g of x equals negative x plus 2 quantity squared and x minus 2 quantity squared. Um, I'm changing my color back to purple. Okay, so my degree here is, I've got, this would be an x squared, and this is going to be an x squared whenever you FOIL that thing out. And then x squared times x squared is x to the fourth, so fourth degree. And it's negative, which means I should expect it to do something like this. So referee, both ends are pointing downwards. Okay, now let's find our x-intercepts. There's only two of them. I've got one at negative 2, and I've got one at positive 2. And since the multiplicity on each one of these is even, this means that each one of these things is tangent. I'm just going to put a little t there to remind myself it's going to bounce off on each one of these things. Okay, what's my y-intercept? plug in 0 everywhere there's an x. So negative, this, I need to write that down. It's going to be a 2 squared and a negative 2 squared. So that's a 4 and a 4, 16, and it's still negative, so negative 16. All right, you ready? Let's give this one a try too. Oh, man, I need to actually put that down a lot. Further uh, eraser. Let's scooch our x axis up here so a little bit more. So here's one at negative 2. Got another one at positive 2. And then my y intercept is at 16. Let's say that's negative 16 right there. And it's got a dot. Okay. Each one of these things is tangent. And look at my little thumbnail sketch. It's going to start down at the bottom. Switch to another color. How about green this time? Okay, that's fine. It's going to start down here. Come up to that point, bounce off. Go through the y-intercept, bounce off of that one, and then come down. Ooh, it looks kind of like the letter M. Now, of course, I, I shouldn't have these little wavy lines in there. They should be nice and smooth, uh, but I'm, I'm limited to my, you know, this little stylus thingy. So uh, let's compare this to the actual graph right here. Ready? So my two x-intercepts and my y-intercept way down there at negative 16, and voila. So this one, of course, was a lot more stretched out than the one that I made just because I, I didn't have my scale exactly the same on both axes. So now it's time for you to practice a couple of these by your lonesome. So here are your two graphs. Uh, sketch each one of those. You don't even have to do it on graph paper. Just do it on this regular old paper just like I did. We're just looking for a sketch. Okay, pause it, do both of those graphs, and then come back and check your answers. That wraps up this lesson on uh, analyzing the graph's polynomial functions. We were able to use our graphing calculator to approximate the locations of those x-intercepts, the zeros. We used the graphing calculator also to find out our local mins and max points. And uh, those are the little humps, either like this or like that, you know, something like that. And then finally, uh, graphing the polynomial functions by hand, just sketching the graphs out. So here is, um, again, in this picture, you have the, the world's smallest man, living man, and the tallest man in a little interview. Uh, look at that, it's tiny, so, so small. Okay, so here's your assignment. What, what's that, Rowan? Do you know what happened to my sturdy but flexible 24-inch square? Uh, 
I don't know. 